Hello, it is me. If you haven't met me before, my name's Sunday um, and I'm the founder and creator of this group and um, I've been administrator and coaching here for the last, I think it's coming up to eight years, 2016, this coming October. And I've come in today because I wanted to talk about shame and um, I'm part of a group that is, hello, hello, others, come on. Um, I'm part of a group that's um, where together, there's about eight of us together in a group and we meet every fortnight uh, online and um, most of us are in the UK and we are doing something called the final year and what we're looking at is aspects of our life. If this was our last year to live, what would we want to be clearing up, clearing out, creating, doing, etc, etc. And it's it stirred the pot immensely, I have to say. And we're doing it on sort of like the wheel of um, spring, summer, autumn, winter. And um, I'm not quite got to grips with all of that. But at the moment, we're looking at the mother. And of course, that's bringing up stuff for me with my own mothering. And um, our facilitator has invited us to think about... We were, we were last... At, week before last or time before last we were asked to discuss you know share about a bit about our mothers our own understanding of our mothers so you can guess what's coming next isn't it we're going to be talking about ourselves as mothers and some of us haven't had children there's a, a few that haven't had children in fact i'd probably say 50 percent of the women in the group and there's only about eight of us haven't had children and of course i have and there's a couple of others that have as well and um the lady who was facilitating it was saying, you know, we were talking a bit about trauma. And um, I just said, you know, maybe having children was one of my most traumatic experiences. And I have to say it was because, well, those of you who know me well will know that I was raised in a sort of like very, um, quite violent, quite energised environment. Lots of passion, lots of shouting, lots of hitting, lots of rushing, lots of forcing. And I then went on to do the same with my children. And I was talking recently with somebody else who'd had an ex experience, a similar childhood, and how they just sort of disappeared and did their parenting very differently to how I did it. And it's true, I think, we either carry on the patterns or we create a new pattern to say I'm never going to parent like that and do it the complete opposite so like we become with no with no limits no boundaries over giving you know all of that stuff that so many of us experience and I know that there's a few like me who have been um I can't think of another kinder way of saying you know have been um volatile a volatile unsettled unreliable unpredictable parent that was me and of course, you know, I'm going to go into a space and share that. And I don't, it got me thinking about shame and how, when I first started to admit to myself that I'd been a bully and been violent and had done exactly to my children what my dad had done to me, or more or less. Um, I, the shame in me, you know, the, um, excuse me, my hair's all got tangled up in me. <laughs> Uh, never mind. Um, it got me thinking about the shame and the guilt and, and how I could have just buried that and denied it. And I think a lot of parents, a lot of children struggle with parents who don't actually fess up to how they were as a parent. And I have done that with my daughters. Um, and I, I speak about it publicly, you know, to say that I was abusive. Um, in that sense of that I lost my temper and I took it out on them in various ways. Shouting, smacking, hitting, and not when they'd done anything naughty, just when they were irritating me. And I know that so many of us do that. And the shame that I think we carry as being parents like that just seems to close us down to life. And so what, what I've come on to say here that to really get underneath the shame, you have to share it. That's been my experience, because shame doesn't go away. And I remember some, Benny, Brenny Brown talks a lot about shame and how, um, what, what keeps shame alive 
is keeping it hidden. Like when you expose it to the light, it hasn't got anywhere else to go. It just has to. And you know, once you start to say, I did this or this happened to me or loads of other people then say, oh yeah, me too, you know? And there's some, yeah, there will be some people who, who might judge you for sharing something that you used to hit your kids. I mean, we're not too far generationally, we're not too far away where that was the norm, you know, even though it wasn't acceptable. People, I think, knew that it wasn't okay to hit other people. It's not okay to kill other people. It's not okay to go to war. It's not okay to lash out at people when we feel frustrated or angry. It just isn't. We kind of know it. And yet, so many of us do it. We think, well, they're doing it, so I'll do it back or whatever. But then you get to a certain age where you think, I don't want to be like this. I don't want to conduct myself like this. This isn't how an adult woman of some age and integrity and intelligence wants to manifest herself in the world. So that's when I started to think. And then I was offered a course where I had to stand at the front of the room in front of 300 people and tell them my three darkest, deepest secrets I didn't want them to know about me. <laughs> oh God, if I'd have known that I was going to be invited to do that, I'd have never have gone. And yet it was that sharing, that revealing of myself and who I was in all my shame and guilt and absolute disgust I think at myself that freed me up on another level it freed me up to be able to realize that it wasn't just me that I am like every other human being a product of my parent how I was parented the lifestyle that I was that I was born into etc and and copying those people who I lived amongst you know for me it was either you have to stick your elbows out and your chin out and get your fist ready or you didn't or you didn't I felt I didn't survive in that in that family and there was a lot of love as well so that you know I think it was balanced out it was a bit extreme and it was balanced out and you know, I suppose in my heart of hearts, I think that my daughters don't have me in their lives because of that. They realise that I was abusive, that I was unpredictable, I wasn't reliable. Um, I kind of left them to fend for themselves a lot of the time, which I think is a good thing because it sort of was the making of me as a child. And at the same time, I think, well, I know now that I didn't, I didn't, comfort them enough I didn't nurture them enough I did comfort and nurture them and I don't think that I did it that to sort of in the right balance but anyway back to shame so what shame really loves is to be hidden away and we hide it away in, in so many ways and it's like if I tell my truth to you you won't like me anymore or you'll judge me or you'll kill me off or exclude me or whatever and sometimes it is like that because people do tend to judge and do tend to criticise. But I think that the people who have worked on themselves and who know the fallibility of being a human and also recognise that we're a product of our childhood upbringing, they are the ones who can who won't have a judgment, who don't, yeah, yeah, you're just like everybody else, you've got your stuff. You know, and you're still lovable and you're still likeable and you're not just your behaviours, you're more than just your behaviours. So I think what I'm trying to say here, you know, like if you've got some, you know, those things that we squirrel away and put them in our closets and we shut the door or put the lid on and put the tape on and put the bag on it and never to be opened. Those are the sorts of things that keep us stuck, that keep us stuck out of connection with other people because there's always a risk that that box is gonna get triggered and be opened. So if you can open it yourself and start to share it with people that you fit, and people do share in here, you know, there'll be plenty of us in here who've had abortions. There'll be plenty of people in here who've been raped and abused. There'll be loads of us, absolutely loads of us, who've got this bits of, or that we've stolen, or that we've, maybe some of us have even had car accidents and somebody's died as a result of our driving, whatever. You know, and we, and, it, it sometimes it is hard to get past that judgment and yet 
we have to for each other because we're all fallible we're all human we all make mistakes some of them you know i narrow escapes that i've had where a little little boy once run out into the road when he was under my care you know and for that split second i could see my life changing completely because that little boy could have been flattened by another car you know and i i think of that time as as as, a, as a, an indicator of how close we all come to having our life changed forever by some terrible mistake or event that happened to us and we hide it away in shame and some people never recover from that which is a real shame because we're, we're on this planet for a very short time I know it feels like forever when you <laughs> when you're estranged and you think bloody hell <laughs> But we are, we're on this planet for such a short time, you know, and those of us who've managed to access love and really feel those wonderment, the wonderment of living, you know, and that real joy of just watching a simple sunset or sunrise, you'll know what I mean, you know, that there is some sort of joy. And yet if we're hiding something about ourselves that we feel ashamed about, it kind of gets in the way. So the invitation in here is to share your deepest, darkest secrets and see if you die, because I don't think you will. And you know, the more of us on the planet who say, yeah, me too, or I did this, or this happened to me, or I carry this shame around this thing that I did. You know, in the world of the world that we have now, you know, there is so much judgment around. You know, and I, I can imagine that it's really difficult for women to say that they had an abortion or that they had a child and it was a, a surrogate birth or that they've had some sort of child in a way that isn't the traditional way, you know. Um, some people carry um, anger around the fact that they're a single parent and feel judged for being a single parent. It's not easy, but coming out, freeing up your shame freeing up any, anything that you feel ashamed about can really set you free, really set your heart free. And then you can rock up to people and say, yeah, you know, if they say, what's the worst thing that ever happened to you in your life? You can tell the truth, you know, and then that's where we make the connections when we share our vulnerability. And that's what Brenny Brown talks about a lot. You know, the people who have the closest connections and feel the most joy in their lives are the ones who can risk it to say, this is who I am, this is what I did, this is what I carry shame about. And, and, and then those people who stick around because they've recognized that they're in the same boat or a similar boat. You know, when you've taken drugs or got so drunk that you couldn't find your way home or, you know, people carry the shame about the strangest things you know that seem really big and yet somebody say oh well you know yeah i did that <laughs> and they don't have a problem with it you know yeah it's an interesting one and looking back over the things that you've done that you think mm, i'm not going to tell anybody about that <laughs> those are things that we should be sharing with people that we trust and then once once, you know, and I can say quite freely, you know, that I hit my children. Yeah, I wished I'd never done that. I wished I'd never done that. You know, and I did. And I'm not going to deny it. And I'm not going to back down from it. And if somebody says, you're a bad mother, I'll say, okay, yeah, that's your point of view. You know, my point of view was that I was doing the best that I could with what I knew back then. Because my take on it as well is that, you know, we can only do what we know to do until we get some new information. Everybody's doing their best. And you know, even our adult children are doing their best. Our sons and daughters are doing their best. That's all they know to do right now. When they get older and they get a bit longer in the tooth and they've had a few knocks and bumps and shake rattles and rolls like we have, they'll wake up a little bit, you know? They will wake up a little bit. And that maybe they carry shame about what they did. You know, can you imagine? Like having to come to terms with the fact that you cut your parents or your mum out, out of your life. And not only that, you did it in quite a violent way. Because a lot of them have done, haven't they? Sent us terrible texts and 
said terrible things and done terrible things and can you imagine the shame that they carry or they will carry as they get older? Either that or it gets buried inside of them in one of those boxes that they've got taped up, bagged up, never to be looked at again. And so that stops them having a real connection with the people that they love. God, humans are messy. We're such a messy and how you get, how you get to love yourself in your messiness is, you know, it's so freeing. I'm offering this self-love course. I've got some places left. If you're interested in exploring self-love, like message me. Um, I'm really excited to take my work into this space, into this new space around self-love and self-forgiveness and all of that malarkey. Because for me, that feels like a really powerful place to be to come to life from. You know, and letting go of your shame. And don't worry, I'm not going to make you tell your de deepest darkest secrets on, on the course <laughs> maybe just write them out as a first step you know be brave be bold and see if you can clear out this cack that we carry because we all carry it and if you're in strong denial and say well i didn't do anything wrong you know it isn't that you did anything wrong it's just that maybe if you look back, you, there's some things that you wish you hadn't done. And those are the things that you can look at and think, yeah, I wish I'd done that. And then maybe, you know, with that releasing that shame and guilt, you can free yourself up into forgiving yourself. And then maybe you get into um, a place where you can genuinely apologise. Yeah, I, I did this and it didn't feel great and I wish I'd done it. And... And then you can say, how did that impact you? And then you get to have an adult conversation, not a defense attack thing that most of us have, you know, this, well, defend attack, defend attack, this thing that we do, but we don't have very good communications. If you haven't got a copy of the Nonviolent Communication book by Marshall B. Rosenberg, and you're interested in exploring how to have all of this stuff in your life to explore. Get yourself a copy of that. It's called Nonviolent Communication and it's by Marshall B. Rosenberg. And it's a lovely book and invites you into looking at different ways in having honest, real, connected communications with other people, even in difficult conversations. So I hope that's touched some hearts and souls and shame in there. And if it's inspired you to do something about the shame, the bit, the boxes that you've got in your body and you, wherever you've squirreled them away, those memories that you don't want to look at again, those are the things that if you gently take the lid off and then shove it up and shove it back down and just keep doing that for a bit and then it won't be so scary and if you want some support reach out for me because this is the stuff that I do help people to sort of like unearth the bits about ourselves that we're not yet at peace with and then we can be in self-love and we can be at peace in ourselves and what other people say to us and do around us we've got the resources to deal with that so I'm sending you lots of love and uh, I'll see you again real soon. Bye for now. Bye.